Hello, I'm Kat, and in today's tutorial, we'll be learning how to create pixel art in Adobe Illustrator. I'll teach you how to set up your workspace to get this fancy preview pane, tips to make coloring super easy, and the best export settings so you can save your pixel art perfectly at any size. If you'd like to follow along, there is a free starter file linked in the description down below that will include today's color palette and reference image. The first thing we'll be doing is setting up our pixel grid. We'll use the rectangular grid tool for that, which you can find here under the line tool in your menu. And before we click to make that grid, just make sure that your fill color and your stroke color are set to none. Now we'll hover over the bottom corner of our artboard here till you see intersect and click once. First thing we'll set up here is our width and height, which is going to be 1600 by 1600 pixels to match the exact size of our artboard. Then we'll move on to dividers. I'm going to go for a 32 by 32 pixel image or 32 by 32 boxes in this case because it's vector. Uh, to do that, I'm going to subtract one from the number of dividers so that we end up with a perfect 32 by 32 grid. So we'll fill in 31 here and 31 in vertical. At the bottom here, you can go ahead and leave this checked for outside rectangle as a frame. Just make sure that fill grid is unchecked and click OK. Now we have our grid all set up and each of these boxes will represent a pixel in our finished pixel art. Now I'm going to set up my reference image as a template. I'm going to add a new layer here, go to File, Place, grab the image we want to use, click this to add it to the artboard and scale it up. And I'm going to move this layer to the back and lock it. Now you can see our grid is selectable and it's still on top of our reference. Just before we start painting here, I want to show you a trick to get a preview window, which is extremely helpful for pixel art because you want to be working zoomed in for the most part, but you want to see your art zoomed out so that you can get a good idea of how it's actually looking. So we'll go to Window, New Window, and now this file is actually open in both of these windows. And if we go back to the Window menu under Arrange, click Tile, and now you'll have two versions side by side. I'll be using the left window as my artwork window where I'll be working zoomed in and the right window I'll be zoomed out. To give me a little more room here, I'll collapse the properties panel and the layers panel, which we won't need. And you can zoom all the way out on this. Now you will need the grid to be selected as you're working because we'll be using the live paint bucket tool. So here's a trick to hide these blue lines. I'm going to press control H, that's command H on a Mac, to hide my edges. And you'll have to do this in both windows individually. And now the pixel grid is still selectable and paintable, but it won't be distracting us as we're working. You can find the live paint bucket tool here under the shape builder, or you can press K on your keyboard to get to that. We'll click once to make this a live paint group. And now you see the grid disappears and the highlight only hovers over the pixel that we're about to paint. To really get that pixel art look, it's important to have a limited palette. So I've set my palette up ahead of time and I have it here on my artboard as shapes I can sample from, and also in my swatches palette as a color group. The reason I've set this up as a color group is because if you click a color with the live paint tool selected, you can use your arrow keys to navigate through this color group bar with the right and left arrows. It's also very easy to sample these colors from the shapes on the artboard by holding down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and clicking a shape to grab its color. That's the method I'll be using for most of the tutorial, so I'll go ahead and just close the swatches panel and we'll get started painting. We'll see if I sample this color to get started and click here. We will start creating pixels. It's very hard to see when your reference image is 100% opacity because the colors will be exactly the same. So we'll fix that really quickly. Over in my layers panel, I'll just unlock the reference for a moment, grab the whole layer and open up the transparency panel. I'm going to drop it to around 50%. That's actually a bit light. So I'll move it back up to 80, we'll say. That works well. And now we're set. Make sure to relock that layer and you can lock the colors layer as well. Now with the live paint tool, you have a couple of options. A single click will fill a single square. You can also drag to fill squares and there's a fill option. I'm going to just finish outlining this section roughly here. If you double click, it will fill the empty space in there. So that's a little bit faster for bigger sections. From here, it's just a matter of sampling colors and painting over your reference image if you're using one or just painting if you're making a brand new custom image. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part of the process and then I'll show you the steps you need to expand this live paint group before we learn how to export. One thing to note in the painting process is if you get some color where you don't want any to erase, you're going to want to just switch to a fill of none and paint back over those pixels. Then you can go ahead and select your color and continue painting. 
Whether you're creating pixel art in Illustrator or in another program, there's a lot of pixel art specific techniques that you might want to learn. I'm going to go ahead and link some of my favorite pixel art channels in the description down below that you can check out if you're interested in learning more. So I finished painting my pixels and cleaned up my file a bit by deleting my reference layer and my color swatches. Now I'll show you how to expand the live paint group. First we'll go up here to object, ungroup. Now we'll go back to the object menu, find live paint down here and go to expand. If we take a look at the layers panel now, you'll see that we have this layer with our pixel art, which is just a group of the colored boxes that we've colored in. And there's nothing else there that we need to delete. We do have this locked background layer. If I go ahead and delete this, you can see that this is a fully transparent background pixel art piece. So we can export that now. So I'll go to file, export, export as, we don't need to check artboard for this, so we'll just go ahead and click export. Now here is the important setting. You want to make sure under anti-aliasing it says none. This makes sure that we're not creating extra colors if you export a size that's larger than your screen resolution and you'll just maintain that sharp pixel look on your exports. So we'll go ahead and click OK here. And if I switch over to my export folder here, you can see our final pixel art gem exported as a transparent PNG file clicked open this, you'll see it can be used on any background and now you're free to use it in Photoshop or any other program you like. So you can use this process anytime you want to paint your own custom pixel art. There is a cool process that allows you to automate some of this to convert images from vectors or photos to pixel art. I'm going to be uploading a tutorial on that next week. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see that and you can click here for more quick tips in Illustrator. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and have a great day.